or more properly an ear out uh, for musicians that just are kind of out there, performers on the streets, in the subways, uh, in uh, restaurants, in bars, in clubs. Uh, We were talking about Webster Hall last week. And uh, this week I was back in Times Square walking through, uh, doing my usual uh, professional thing. And, uh, you know, I saw a guy uh, on the street sitting on the ground doing one of my favorite things because, you know, as a kid, I remember one of the most uh, kind of uh, center pin, center pole types of things that I remember from New York City references was these guys on the streets playing pots and pans and uh, found another guy right here. Uh, definitely threw him some uh, some change for a little street performance. I love these guys in Times Square. And uh, I learned uh, that you're not actually supposed to sit down on the ground in Times Square. You can be a performer if you're in the right area and if you're standing up. Now, this guy was breaking those rules, but he was just a little bit north of Times Square. So it was, uh, he was in a situation where he was getting kicked out. He was jamming out, having a good time. Man. This guy was smiling, laughing. Nice little crowd formed around him. authentic New York City here, my friends. Just like Stargrooms, also a band from New York City. I don't know how they carry all this stuff around, though. I mean, he's got, uh, he had, like, all sorts of pieces of metal. Uh, I think he had a xylophone out there next to all these broken pots and pans as well. Again, this is classic New York City, classic Times Square. I remember this kind of stuff going back into the 80s. It's great to see it. 2017 still happening for you, my friends, here at Pop Song Tech. And, uh, you know, after that, we uh, spent some time this weekend, uh, you know, just with family. And, uh, you know, when you've got a bunch of toddlers and uh, they've got a lot of friends, uh, birthdays uh, pop up every weekend, it seems. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get to one of my best friend's uh, birthday parties. Uh, His daughter was turning two and uh, they were down in Hoboken. And we just got slammed with snow on Saturday. So didn't make it down to that. But there was another one once they cleared the snow on Sunday. And these bouncy house places have popped up all over the place. They didn't have these things when I was a kid. When I was a kid, you were lucky if you had a birthday party at McDonald's. That was like the biggest thing. You go there, you get a happy meal, and they get the ball pit. And uh, sometimes they had that slide. Uh, Or, you know, if it wasn't that, it was typically kids having birthday parties at a parent's house someplace. And, you know, the the rich people would would, would hire a clown. or some sort of a, you know, an animal, right, uh, that you could ride around in the backyard or something like that. Well, those days, my friends, seem to be long gone uh, because uh, all of these things have popped up all over the place, uh, whether it's uh, uh, trampoline parks or bouncy house parks or uh, the one I was at this weekend was called Screaming Parties. And uh, they had bouncy house things. They had little cars you could ride around. They had air hockey. And I felt like a celebrity walking in there. Because, uh, you know, I walk in there and all the kids say, Otis, it's Otis Ranger. Otis Ranger is here. We love your podcast. Yes, I'm big amongst the two two and three year olds. No, it's not because of that. It's because my daughter this past week had the honor and privilege of carrying around Nora the Frog. And so her homework assignment this week as a three year old was to take Nora Nora the Frog around with her to various events and take pictures with Nora so that she could tell a story to her classroom. Uh, So that meant that uh, Nora went alongside her to the gymnastics class that she had this week. It snowed this weekend, so we took uh, Nora outside to play in the snow, you know, sledding around a little bit there, this frog. That's right, this is what I do. I pull pull, uh, stuffed animal frogs around on sleds in my spare time. Um, My goodness, how life has changed. And uh, then we went to the kids' party, so I brought Nora along with me. I walk into there, the place with Nora, and all... All the kids know it's Nora. I might as well have been uh, 
you know, Bruno Mars walking into uh, the Super Bowl. Uh, it was uh, like kids saying, oh, my God, it's Nora, it's Nora. So I was uh, running around, the, you know, taking pictures with Nora and the kids. And uh, Nora was playing a little bit of ice hockey. Uh, I'm sorry, air hockey. Uh, so we, I, I threw Nora right onto the middle of this table, and all the kids were trying to hit Nora with the, uh, the, the air hockey stuff. Well, anyway, I digress. Uh, I was at this bouncy house party, and I got to say that uh, they had one of the cooler things that I've seen, which was a simulation of a roller coaster. And uh, they've got this program out there. It's called uh, No Limits. No Limits is uh, kind of the software that many people use to design roller coasters. Well, it can also be used to experience the design of those roller coasters in uh, simulation form. And they had this giant room, uh, and in that room they had this uh, hydraulic-powered uh, set of seats, four seats in a row that you buckle yourself into. Uh, and uh, they had, in a two-dimensional screen in front of you, a large screen of you riding this roller coaster. And the seats and the hydraulics for the seats were synchronized with how the roller coaster was moving. And so the kids were having a blast on that. Let's see what I got here. This is them. <laughs> Riding on this uh, roller coaster, no limits. Software, two dimensional. And uh, the reason I think this is also appropriate, though, is because uh, just over the past two weeks, I downloaded the No Limits 2 software to my PC to hook up to my virtual reality gear. Uh, I've got the HTC Vive. And uh, they've got this uh, roller coaster simulation software now, uh, version 2, No Limits 2, that you can download for your HTC Vive to your PC and experience riding a roller coaster in virtual reality, uh, which means that you can look around and you're, you're standing there, and let me tell you, it disorients you like nothing else will. Uh, you know, on episode 17... Ted Watson, lead singer of Stargroves, our featured band today, uh, was talking with us about uh, his HTC Vive when he got it. And uh, so I got this thing now, and I got to say, uh, this Vive, man, I put this thing on, and some people say you're going to get sick after a bit uh, using virtual reality. I haven't uh, until this game. If you really want to make yourself sick, <laughs> download No Limits 2, uh, ride some of those uh, craziest roller coasters, and uh, maybe you too will get motion sickness like yours truly. Well, listen, uh, I had uh, the virtual reality gear on my father as well, and uh, he was experiencing it for the first time with uh, some Star Wars games that I've got downloaded and uh, you know some other archery games and arcade games. It's a ton of fun uh, for my nephews and uh, you know my folks, and uh, I've even had my mother-in-law using the thing. So virtual reality was one of the big topics of uh, uh, CES this week. Samsung uh, indicated that uh, with their Gear VR stuff, they've sold over 5 million units at this point. And recall that Mark Zuckerberg said that uh, virtual reality will really hit mainstream when about 10 million uh, units roll out. So we're pretty much halfway there at this point. So, you know, virtual reality, expect a lot more of that in 2017. Alexa and other voice services, expect a lot of those in 2017. Uh, more about autonomous cars. Uh, Google's got an autonomous minivan coming out, apparently. Uh, and of course, you've got the competitor now for Tesla and that Faraday car. Uh, all of these things, though, need power and energy, and that's the premise of our energy series. We started it off last week with nuclear power. There's a great article in the Wall Street Journal from this morning that I'm going to talk about on the other side of the song, uh, leading us into another interview with my father, who's just about to step into studio here, uh, for another fantastic interview on energy. Today, we're talking about the hydrogen economy. Stick around for that. But now we've got Stargroves, and I invite you to check them out at stargroves.com at any point. This is a song off their 2014 album, a self-titled album. The song is called Star Elf.
One of my favorite bands that I've discovered over the past year, that is Star Groves right there with their song called Star Elf. And I uh, want to thank you guys again for uh, checking out uh, Pop Song Tech. Uh, you can find out more about Star Groves at stargroves.com or go back and listen to episode number 17 uh, for a interview, uh, an interview that we did with Ted Watson, the lead singer there. So we've got a great conversation coming up about high. 